Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and it's time for more Scuttlebutt. This week we have a treat for you guys here. This is not a single game. This is a series of games from Rank Sprint Season 10. I'll talk a little more about this in a minute, but all of these games are in Tier 8 Premium German Cruiser Prinz Eugen. Now, Prinz Eugen is a variant of Admiral Hipper out of the Tech Tree. Uh, she has the same armament. She has the same guns, the same torpedoes, uh, the same really, really solid armor scheme with that turtle back. Um, her detection is a little worse. She has a few more hit points. Her guns reload slower, but in exchange for these little trade-offs, she gets a repair party. And it is huge. Like Otago at Tier 8, she is one of the most survivable cruisers, uh, not due to her stealth as like kind of like Otago, but just due to her just overall tankiness and that heal and her amount of hit points and everything else just adds up to be a really, really solid ship. I've I've always had kind of a, a love affair with the Hipper class ships. They've they've always had a special place in my heart. Of course, I love the German cruiser tree. They're the last actual ships in that tree that were actually built. Um, and since they gave this one heals kind of sometime after she released, she's remained one of my favorite premiums to play, even if she's not the most amazing premium in the game. Uh, for this particular format, I felt like Prinz Eugen brought the absolute best mix of uh, survivability and firepower and everything and, you know, speed and maneuverability that I wanted to take. And uh, ultimately, I had a really good season in her. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Actually, we'll get right into it, right? The Russian the Russian holidays this week mean that there's basically no major news. There's no dev blogs. But there are other things we can talk about, one of which is um, this season of Ranked Sprint. And I, and I definitely want to spend a little time talking about this. So like I was saying, the games you're going to see, and there's a small series of them here, are some highlights and at least one low light from, from Season 10 of Ranked Sprint. When they first announced uh, a 1v1 format, I thought Wargaming was out of their minds. But this was by far the most fun and entertaining rank sprint season that I've ever played in. And it's not even close. Like, it's, it doesn't even hold a candle to anything else. I absolutely loved this mode, and I was sad that I ranked out and wasn't able to play it anymore. Um, in the background here, you're starting off seeing here uh, include a, a game against uh, a North Carolina that, that uh, spoiler alert, does turn into a narrow win. Um, a loss where I, I literally throw a game away against a Z23. I outplay myself. Uh, but that guy played it dead on. Uh, a game where Kagero and I kill each other simultaneously, so it ends in an honest-to-God draw in a 1v1 game. Swear to God, not making this up. And and my final game in, in the mode where I actually completed my ranking out uh, against a Massachusetts. I found, for me, playing Oigen, that Massachusetts and Turpets were like my boogeymen. Um, they were the hardest opponents that I had to deal with. Most Turpets players uh, would try to charge me, of course, and get their torpedoes into action. That didn't usually work out for them because I have a heavier torpedo broadside than they do. And if I can manage to dodge just one or two of those and I can get all of mine off, he's in trouble. Um, smart Massachusetts players who kited me, that was basically like an auto loss for me. That's a matchup that I essentially can't win. We have almost the same detection. He, his 16-inch guns overmatch me, uh, overmatch my bow. And if he's just going to kite me all day long, his secondaries chew me up. Like a, a smart Massachusetts player, I, I couldn't beat. Uh, luckily, not everybody <laughs> playing Massachusetts in this mode really, really knew how to how to maximize the ship in this in, in the in these matchups. So it, I did beat a few of them. Um, I said this on Twitter. I'll say it again. One of the things that I love about this one v one mode uh, is that each game was a unique tactical problem that had to be solved. The combination of what ship you took, what ship your opponent sh uh, took, and the map you were playing on meant that no two games were alike. It meant that you and you alone were responsible for making every decision that ultimately led to victory or defeat, and it also made it easier to look back and realize and learn from mistakes. In a minute, when the Z23 game comes up, I, I completely misplay the last 60 seconds of that game. And I realize it right afterwards, of course, and my, and my opponent, to his credit, made all of the correct plays to make me play for it. He played well, and I didn't, and he deserved, and he earned that win. But the quick turnaround time, right? Like, most of these games were three to five minutes. Like, seven to eight minutes was a long game. Um, combined with the, the fact that you didn't lose stars meant that you could, you could play a game, make a mistake, maybe get a win, who knows? And if you made a mistake, you screwed up, you lost, you learned from it, shrug, you hit battle, and you go again. 
Uh, and it was just it was just quick and fun, and I really hope they bring this one back. This this mode was a ton of fun. There were some other alternate modes going on over the holidays. Um, right after Christmas, I believe it was the 28th, I think, that Saturday. I gotta look here. Something like that. Yeah, the 28th. They ran um, 4v4 Clan Brawl. That seemed to be a success. I, unfortunately, was not able to play, but a lot of guys in, in my clan seemed to get in there and have a good time with it. So, like, the, the feedback that I've seen and, and whatnot seems fairly positive. It wouldn't shock me to see them bring something like that back again. Um, this past Saturday after the New Year, uh, they, of course, they ran 12v12 Clan Brawl, and that appears to be kind of a bit of an abject disaster, as, as you would have expected. Um, it's not really surprising to me, given the time of year and, and the, the clan size limitation, uh, rounding up literally, you know, 30 to 20, 20 to 30% of your clan just to play some games is not easy, especially, you know, the time of year and people are still traveling and da 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 so I just, I'm not, I don't know how many people turn, showed up for 12v12, um, but I'll be very, I'll be, I'll be curious to see if they share numbers with us. I don't think they will, but um, it wouldn't shock me to see that the 12v12 mode was not very popular and not very well attended. Um, of course, other events still going on. Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico event is kind of winding down. You've got about a, less than a week now to earn your quote unquote free uh, Puerto Rico. It's really noteworthy that there have actually been people in the community who have earned their PR without spending a dime, uh, like uh, a Kingpin here on North America. Uh, I'll put some links down below to his Twitch. There's a Twitch clip, and I'll put a link to his channel down below. It took him an incredible 104 hours of playtime to earn his Puerto Rico without purchasing any of the doubloon boosters. Uh, kudos to that 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 guy. That that's dedication that I just don't have to this game. Um, I, I would not have earned mine without the doubloons and the Goritzia that Wargaming gifted us and, and the ease of just hopping in Goritzia and co-op and smashing out battles or whatever to knock out those first three directives. I'm I'm really grateful to Wargaming for for allowing them to put in allowing me to put in a minimal amount of effort to earn this ship. But I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't know how much play she's gonna gonna use. If you know you can go back and look around the channel, I did a lot of Puerto Rico videos. I really wanted to like this ship. But the end result is fairly mediocre. I will say this. If you really, really like Alaska, um, you know, eventually they're going to make Puerto Rico available via other means. Coal, steel, free XP. We don't know. They haven't announced it yet. But they've said that sooner or later she will come some other way. Um, and you're interested, like, you know, if you like Alaska, Puerto Rico's not a bad play. But her dispersion will troll you and make you angry. So just be advised that you're not getting Alaska's accuracy. Um, I guess to me the overall takeaway from this event, like, the community was pretty vocal that they were not happy about this. Um, I understand why, uh, but to me the sad part is that a lot of people still continue to spend doubloons on it, um, and, and ultimately well, that you're just rewarding Wargaming's kind of borderline exploitative behavior. Um, so, I, you know, it's going to happen again, guys. They, they're going to have made enough money on this that, that that's going to encourage them to do this again. I mean, we all know it. It's coming. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can cross our fingers not to this level of insanity. But uh, don't be shocked when you see an event come like this uh, come like this again. I really hope they use the dockyard again because that's been fabulous, and I really want to see more dockyard. That was that's such a cool cool effect. Um, right before Christmas, actually, let me back up. Um, Anchors away. Uh, the 2019 Anchors Away tour has two more stops. It's kind of winding down here. We're just a few weeks away from the next stop at USS Hornet in Alameda, California. And then the very last one that is currently announced uh, is aboard USS Kidd in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, that one's on the 22nd of February. I am not going to be able to make it to Hornet, um, but I am absolutely going to Kidd. We're going to drive over there and spend a weekend and, and, and check that out. I'm a Fletcher fanboy. I can't believe I've been driving, literally driving past this ship all my almost all my life. Uh, and I've never stopped to go visit, so we're, I'm, I'm going. It's absolutely going to happen. Um, if you watched the NA portion of the big charity stream uh, right before Christmas, you may have noticed that the uh, community team there kind of unofficially announced all the stops on the next Anchors Away tour for 2020. Now, they haven't announced dates yet, um, but there's and there's been some turnover on the list of ships. So these are the ships. These six ships are returning to the lineup from uh, 2019. That's uh, HMCS Haida in Hamilton, Ontario, USS Turner Joy, Bremerton, Washington, USS Massachusetts in Fall River, Massachusetts, USS Iowa in Long Beach, California, USS Lexington in Corpus Christi, Texas, and USS New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey, across the river from Philadelphia. Those six ships were on the tour in 2019, and they'll be on the tour again in 2020. However, they've added four brand new ships to the rotation. Um... 
So coming, joining the tour in 2020 are USS Intrepid in uh, New York City, USS Wisconsin in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, USS North Carolina in Wilmington, North Carolina, and easily the most shocking one is HMAS Vampire 2 at Darling Harbor in Sydney, Australia. Vampire is one of the exhibits at the absolutely fabulous Australian National Maritime Museum there in Darling Harbor. Um, if you could make any of these events, I mean, they haven't announced dates yet. Dates are coming. Keep an eye on the NA portal or the forums. They'll announce dates when they can. If you can make any of these, I just, like I always say, go. Wargaming, they put on a great event. They know how to take care of you. They're, they're there to listen, answer questions, bring you, bring you goodies and freebies. It's, it's a ton, a ton of fun. Um, but if you have to pick one, I really, really have to recommend the event in Sydney. Now, for most of us here in North America, that's probably not realistic. If you live in Australia, you should absolutely try and go. Um, if you live on the west coast of the U.S. and you're willing to make the flight, you should absolutely go. The The quality of the Australian National Maritime Museum at Darling Harbor, I cannot, I cannot overstate it. I've been there. Uh, it's been coming up on about six years now since I was there. But it is a stunning facility. It's fabulous. Sydney is fabulous. If you're, if you're an American and you've never traveled to Sydney, you're going to land in Sydney and you're going to look around and go, do these people have any idea how good they have it? This city is beautiful. It is, it is fabulous. It's a fabulous place to visit, and the museum there is, is, is top-notch. So if you get the chance to go to that one, absolutely go. Uh, if you aren't able to make it, well, I understand. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a long way to Sydney, uh, but uh, definitely make that one if you can. And, of course, all these, other, all these other locations will also be good. I'm kind of eyeballing North Carolina. We've got some really good friends uh, that live in Raleigh, which is only a couple hours up the road, so I may try and make that one. Um, and, um, my, uh, my, my, I have other family that lives in, uh, not too far from Turner Joy, uh, in Bremerton. So I may try and make uh, a couple, a couple of trips and we'll see. Depends on dates. Everything's dependent on dates and we don't know where the dates are yet. So we'll see where it goes. Um, last but not least, while I've got everybody here, I want to talk about stream schedule with the holidays over. I'm getting back to my regular Twitch schedule. Um, I've actually, uh, kind of cut a, a deal with my wife. I'm going to expand things a bit for the next few months. We're going to kind of trial run this and see how it goes. I'm going to stream two nights a week. So I'm, I've Tuesday Tuesdays is my existing schedule, Tuesday nights. I'm going to add Thursday nights to that. Um, and I may not always stream boats. I will stream boats on Tuesdays, period. That's that's the backbone. But the Thursday stream, I may mix it up a bit. We might try some Subnautica. I might try some Civilization VI. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to see how it goes. I want to try and expand my horizons a little bit uh, with what else I'm putting on the channel. Um, I'm probably also going to mix in a couple of random weekend streams here and there, uh, as well. Um, basically what I've decided for me is I'm going to make a push for partner in the first quarter. Uh, I applied for partner kind of last fall and the reply I got back horse. I was turned down. No big deal. I expected that, but they were like, uh, you need to stream more. And I was like, well, I kind of have a job and I don't really do this for a living and this is not really realistic, but okay, fine. Um, I'm still having fun doing this. And so I figure... What the hell? Uh, so I've set a goal for myself to kind of get this partner thing, like get that check marked and have that kind of going for me. Um, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll even maybe I'll even find time to go to TwitchCon. I don't know. That's probably a long shot. But the, the bottom line for me is I've decided to make 2020 the year that I'm going to grow things a bit and kind of see how far I can push this uh, beyond just kind of the hobby level that I've maintained it at for the last you know, couple of years, I suppose. Um, one thing coming up, um, my birthday is in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out on Twitter and maybe here on the channel. Uh, I'll probably be doing a birthday stream at some point in the couple of weekends. My birthday is actually the 18th, um, so probably sometime that weekend I'll, I'll put together a birthday stream. i got to sit down and noodle how I want to pull that off and, and figure that out, what I want to give away and make a big deal out of it and so on and so forth. So anyway, it should be fun. Anyway, guys, that's all I've really got. Uh, you know, we've got a quiet week here with Wargaming on holiday. Maybe we'll have some more um, next week. In the meantime, um, enjoy your, you know, finishing up your, uh, your Puerto Rico grinds or whatever else you've got going on in this patch. Uh, 9.0 is around the corner, so British heavy cruisers are coming. Uh, otherwise, stay safe out there. I'll see you on Twitch. Um, be safe. I'll catch you next time.